So at Juniper, we, we really believe that the future of networking is all about experience. And when it comes to experience, network users are demanding more than ever. So low latencies, you know, high quality, rich media, which I was going to play, um, you know, faster response times, innovative services like augmented reality, virtual reality, the metaverse, right? Um, all of us, we are traveling much more uh, and working from home and away from the office much more these days. And we expect an assured and secure experience from wherever we are when we, kept, when we connect to the corporate networks. So those demands are increasing on the network. If we think about metro networks, they've primarily been focused on connectivity. But it's moving away from that. It's not the case anymore. The metro is now the place where connectivity is, is really meeting edge compute and service experience. And the metro is the place now where that service experience is either made or just fundamentally broken. According to a, a global study, um, I think in the, about six months ago by Ernst & Young, service providers are saying that improving service experience is their top strategic priority. So that's what we are focused on in Juniper, helping to deliver that. When we talk about experience at Juniper, we're not just talking about experience of end users. That's the, the thing that people's minds immediately jump to. We're also talking about the experiences of the network operations teams who are keeping those networks up and running healthily. Especially in the last few years, keeping those networks up and running well is becoming more and more critical to everyone's day-to-day -day lives. And so it's these teams that we also want to cater to when we're talking about experience and network experience. When we talk to service providers, there's some general challenges that we see. Those are shown on this slide. So increasing traffic capacities, you know, growing at around about a 30% CAGR in the metro networks. You know, network downtimes uh, for whatever reason, right? So, you know, interruptions to the network of course, is a, a daily occurrence in, in networks around the world. But also, cybersecurity attacks on those networks, unfortunately, continuing to rise. So these are all general issues that service providers and network operators are having to deal with. But underlying all of this is something that I believe is, is probably a, a bigger problem for all of them, and that is operational complexity. It's something that all of our network operators are dealing with. Operational complexity that is slowing down innovation, preventing them from spending time on you know, their own strategic imperatives from a business perspective. So as we think about the, the metro and where we've come from on the left, basically access aggregation, um, bit pipe connectivity, you know, my, my, my career goes back to you know, TDM, SDH days, right? So really just simple bit pipes is, is what we used to build in the metro. And things didn't really change too much in today's access aggregation packet networks. We're really just aggregating packets back in a sort of north to south direction. But we're seeing a lot of change in this segment today. I mentioned already, so 500% growth by 2027. That is huge growth to be dealing with, OK? Services getting distributed down into the metro, you know, whether it's content caches or IP peering distribution, edge compute, essentially, cloud connectivity, all pushing closer to the end users. If you consider those points and then you look at that diagram on the right hand side, clearly you can see it's getting more complex, right? Complexity in the metro, but also the demands being placed on those metro products are increasing as well. So the future for the metro, in our view, is really about looking at that complexity and trying to reduce it, and trying to increase trust in the network at the same time. And then we have to do so at the same time by looking after the experience of those two key stakeholders, the end users and the network operation staff themselves. So we need to do something a little different as we move from left to right in this diagram. 
How do you get sustainability as a business, in your business, as we move forwards with a traditional metro design? If capacity is going to grow 500% by 2027, as network operators, we simply can't afford to spend that time and money upgrading your networks with great regularity. And from a carbon footprint as well, it's also not good. Ripping out boxes and replacing them with new ones, every time we do that, that's carbon footprint that we're adding to. It doesn't matter about the power efficiency of the new box, you're just throwing away stuff. So the reality is that with increased user expectations on quality, if we're always focusing on that basic infrastructure, it's really tough to do anything about this in meeting those demands. And the sad reality is, is that cyber threats are continuing to increase. So integrated security becomes important as we move forwards. Sustainability of the, the base business is super important to us and to yourselves, of course, and something that we have to focus on moving forwards. On top of that, from a top bullet perspective, retention of skilled staff is a critical factor. When we talk to top executives in telcos worldwide, retention of staff, not just recruiting, but retention of staff is a top care about for them. So as we move forwards, we have to do things really to make a shift um, from that manual operations to automated operations, even to predictive operations. We have to make a shift as well for all of us in that work-life balance. Those sort of things are key to retention of staff in our industry. And when I talk about staff moving away from the industry, we hear about them moving to electric vehicles and things like this. Going away from communications in, in general, just moving to completely new industries that are now competing for that same software resource and that same skill set. From a third perspective, we have national imperatives around greenhouse gas emissions. We have companies around the world taking a leadership posture. Due to ourselves, we have a commitment to be carbon neutral. We have industry bodies like ITU, GSMA, including as part of their emerging standards, greenhouse gas emissions targets. So increasingly, the sustainability of the planet is inextricably linked to both the technology and the sustainability of the business itself. So we're trying to think through things like this. How do you deal with these new traffic patterns? How do we deal with this growth? But at the same time, how do you have basic sustainability of the business from a profits perspective, from a people perspective, and for the planet? Taken together, we believe that this is a fundamentally new thing. And at Juniper, we started calling this the Cloud Metro. But this is not a Juniper thing. This is an industry thing. We really do need, if we're going to be sustainable, something very distinct from what we've had in the traditional metro of the past. If we think about where we've come from, traditional metro was fundamentally something focused on devices, manual operations, essentially a do-it-yourself approach to operations. The traffic patterns that we had, again, relatively simple, north to south. And what we also saw was network silos. So you had your consumer broadband network, you had your business network, you had your mobility network, all completely separate, essentially an overbuild. Going forwards, the cloud metro demands a level of sustainability that we haven't seen or delivered before. A network that's not separate, but it's converged, that uses network slicing to separate services. And we also have to take a completely new look at things like power efficiency and also platform longevity for the much longer horizon than we see today. So something designed from the ground up for sustainability and longevity, it has to efficiently meet both today's needs, but also the needs many years into the future from both a growth perspective and a feature enhancement perspective. We also need intelligence built into the platforms. You saw that from the diagram on the right. In a way that we just didn't deliver, and from a silicon perspective, we couldn't deliver with the silicon we had before in the traditional metro devices that we've been rolling out. And we need this because the level of services distribution that we're pushing down now into the metro. 
If the metro is the point of connectivity for the cloud with different distributed compute services, then the metro itself needs to be cloud aware and to have that ability to, to shunt traffic on an any to any basis. Finally, from a, an operational perspective, the future is all about experiences, right? I think I can mention that a few times in this presentation. For the network operation staff and for those end users. And that drives a need to focus on actually on cloud delivered automation. I'll come to that in, in, a, in a bit more detail later. AI enabled automation to assure services and security, to accelerate time to remediation, and to provide insights that weren't possibly that weren't possible before with the manual operations that we've been used to. But fundamentally, it's about service experience. So taken together, this is Juniper's Cloud Metro solution. But I'm sure that many vendors can put up very similar slides. And like I said, this is not a Juniper only market segment we're talking about here. This is an industry thing that we need to drive forwards together. First of all, from an operational perspective, our Paragon suite of products delivers sustainability by essentially giving time back to the network operations staff. It's cloud delivered and it's automation as a service. Secondly, we are pairing this with artificial intelligence. This is proven technology that we've had for a number of years now as part of our MIST solution. And what we are essentially doing is bringing that to the metro domain. So the solution is not only cloud delivered, but it's AI enabled from the get go. Alongside all of this, of course, we have a, a brand new suite of sustainable systems, the ACX 7000 family. Some of the smaller versions of that are sitting out on the table outside. But it's basically everything from the, the smallest little cloud gateway, uh, sorry, cell site gateways, all the way through to the highest capacity modular systems. And to reduce complexity, we've essentially built here a family which is completely interlocking from the smallest to the largest common software features supported across the whole lot. So it's really about you pick the platform and the node type that fits your particular requirements. And to the discussion we had before, of course, the more variety we can bring there, and we are growing this family, then the better and more efficiently we can meet very specific node types going forwards. So you need a, a range of products, definitely, and, and a, it has to grow a lot more than this, but we need a range of products as an industry to support efficiently all of the different deployment scenarios that we have. Collapsing network layers is also very important. I mean, I don't try to show them all here, but the Juniper Optics piece there, a lot of the optics that we support now, and we, we saw some of that discussion in the panel section earlier, things like 400 gig ZR, ZR plus, to collapse those IP and optical transport layers. Smart optics for collapsing things like PON OLT into the routing system, for, for collapsing TDM systems into the routing system. These types of optics and transceivers in our industry are very important as we try to go towards more converged solutions and more converged networks moving forwards, and very important to the sustainability of those networks. The final thing, from an IP services fabric perspective, we're fundamentally trying to redefine what the baseline should be, what we all need to be delivering in this space. Now we have to include integrated security, and we have to include service awareness and service assurance in that layer, so that the infrastructure itself becomes a, a sensor for quality assurance end to end. I'll talk a little bit more about that in detail in the next couple of slides. So first, a little bit more about the Paragon Automation as a Service and why we're taking a leadership posture here by moving to the cloud rapidly. Okay, previously everything we were doing was on-prem. Now we're talking about in the cloud. And again, what is the cloud? The cloud can have different connotations depending how broad you want to think. I was talking with Sterling just earlier. Cloud for some people, yeah, it can be a global cloud, right? It's an Amazon service and it's global. Or it can be theater-based or given some legal requirements in certain countries, it has to be within the national borders. Or, from a number of the service provider customers I talk to, know it's their own private cloud. But the point is, it's, it's a cloud where the connectivity and the automation for the networks it serves is common. Why do we do that? Well, if we look at multiple implementations and also analyst surveys, what we have seen is around about 80% of DIY automation 
efforts or, or, or implementations fail. And even those that do succeed, generally what we see is the programs are greatly elongated. It's difficult to do. Our proposition, as I've said, is that of time. One where we can work with our customers and say, hey, why don't you partner with us, right? Use, use what we build, partner with us, log on to Paragon Cloud, and you can actually be productive in minutes. Not in months or years, but in minutes. And you can leverage expertise and learning that's baked in with the AI. Not learning from your network, but learning from your peers' networks. That's the benefit of cloud, is that shared knowledge. Anyone who's ever seen any of the MIST presentations done by Juniper, they'll see the very rapid ramp of solutions that the AI could detect and recover. In the space of less than two years, it went from detecting and being able to recover almost zero of the defects that the system threw up to almost 100%. That's machine learning. That's the power of AI. That's what we're bringing to the metro domain. And that's what we need to as an industry to support. Again, it's about giving time back to the network operations staff, allowing those same staff to move up the stack and to add value to the business. The, the last piece here that we're bringing, and really I, I just wanted to show this, this is kind of a, a view of AI-enabled onboarding as a service. And essentially what we're doing is we're taking a top-down view from you know, customer use case perspectives. You know, we do that you know, looking at, at things that are difficult to solve, like black hole detection and optical impairments. But here what I'm showing is a particular use case where we have onboarding as a service that is AI-enabled. And really, it, 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 from a user perspective, it's the perspective of the field engineer and also the perspective of the knock engineer. Okay? And from a field engineer's perspective, as you can see, basically on the Fire and App on their, their smartphone, if, you, if any of you have ever set up kind of consumer Wi-Fi in your home, very similar sort of experience, right? You have the app, it tells you where to plug the cables, tells you how to bring it up, all of those things. When something goes wrong, the AI in the back end is helping to troubleshoot and explain, OK, this looks to be an issue. You may want to you know, swap out that transceiver or change that cable or whatever it may be. That's the power of this system in the back end. And for the knock engineer, very similar sort of experience. Lots of stuff automated going on in the back end, you know, adding it to the IP, you know, giving it IP addresses, adding it to the right VPNs, et cetera. And again, where there are issues, helping to troubleshoot all of that. So streamlining the whole, pro whole process, making it very simple, even I can now bring up a node on the network, and I haven't touched equipment for years. So really, really very powerful, and really helping to roll out this new cloud metro of the future.